introduction the ode to autumn by john keats was composed in 1819 and published in 1820 it is the last of the six odes by keats and often considered to be the most remarkable and perfect of his odes ode to autumn is a gorgeous celebration of the quiet yet sensuous beauty of autumn in all its glory and rich serenity Keats himself was much enamored by the season and this is reflected in his letter to his friend John Hamilton Reynolds in September 22, 1819. The letter goes like this. How beautiful the season is now. How fine the air, a temperate sharpness about it. Really without joking, Diane skies. I never liked stubble field so much as now. a better than the chilly green of spring somehow a stubble plain looks warm in the same way that some pictures look warm this struck me so much in my sunday's walk that i composed upon it as the readers go through ode to autumn they experience a mood of tranquility peace and fulfillment the ode also reflects a true greek spirit and the hellenic features have made themselves prominent in the poem there is no strangeness or mystery in the poem the thoughts in the poem have been communicated directly and clearly and perhaps this simplicity has arrested the attention of the readers moreover the poet has maintained an objectivity that has made ode to autumn all the more appealing with his economy of expression keats has thus presented before his readers the season of autumn in all her splendor summary and analysis stanza 1 in the very first stanza keats has described the richness of autumn Autumn is the season of mists and ripening of fruits. The poet approaches to personify autumn who seems to be an accomplice of the sun, secretly taking active part with him in ripening all kinds of vegetation that are available in plenty during the season. Now Keats moves on to give a detailed picture of nature in her fullness during autumn. The vines running round the edges of the branches of the apple trees are bent nearly to the ground with the weight of the apples. The apple trees growing in the cottage gardens are covered with moss and are weighed down with fruit. All the fruits are sweet to the core. The gourds are fleshy and the hazelnuts are filled with sweet kernel. The flowers that bloom specially in autumn are filled with honey and they appear to be an incessant source of sweet nectar for the bees. The sticky honeycombs overflowing with sweet honey is a sheer delight for the bees. Second stanza. In this particular stanza Keats has personified autumn as a woman. She is a winnower, a gleaner and a cedar presser. Firstly, she is engaged in winnowing or separating the chaff from the grains. Anyone who wants to see autumn according to Keats must go down to the cornfields and witness one of the women sitting without care on the granary floor, for she is done with winnowing. Meanwhile, the gentle autumnal breeze plays with her locks of hair. Next, Autumn is imagined as a reaper who has been engaged in reaping corn, but who in the course of her toil is so overpowered by the smell of poppies that she falls asleep, as a consequence of which the next row of corns remain unreaped. Thirdly, Autumn is portrayed by the poet as a gleaner, who collects grains from the field when the crops have been reaped a gleaner is often seen walking steadily along and crossing a stream with the grains collected upon her head the gleaner is also a representative of autumn finally autumn may again be found in the image of a woman who patiently sits by the cedar press and watches the apple juice slowly flowing out of the cedar press and getting collected drop by drop taking long long hours third stanza in this stanza keats is attentive towards the music of autumn spring amidst all other seasons is also known for sweet music 
However, Keats points out that autumn has her own music which is no less beautiful. The sounds of autumn can be heard in the evening when the sun sets and the soft glow of the setting sun falls on the empty fields, those fields from where the corns have been removed. The clouds in the sky look like the bars of a grate and at this time the melancholy sound of the gnats can be heard, sometimes clearly and sometimes feebly, depending on the strength of the wind. Along with the song of the gnats, one can also hear the bleating of full-grown lambs from the far away hills. The song of the grasshopper comes from the surrounding shrubs while the red breast whistles from the garden. Finally, the twittering of the swallows come to the ears as these little birds gather together, getting ready for migration. For soon enough, winter will be arriving.